Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this Flame game development series where we are making a 2D platformer using the Flame engine. In the last video, we added some code to make the enemies move back and forth between two predefined points. And we also added a hit effect for the player which is applied when player hits an enemy. So now that we can collect coins and can collide with enemies, it makes sense to display current score and health of the player somewhere on the screen. And that is exactly what we are going to do in this video. I'll be adding a heads up display which will display these parameters. For that, I'll first create a new directory called HUD under the lib slash game directory. Then inside this, I'll create a new file called HUD.dart. And this file will contain a class called HUD which will extend from component. Let's also add the hasGameRef mix into this class since we'll need to access some properties from the simple platformer class. Next, I'll quickly add a constructor which will forward children and priority to the base class. If you see any error or warning regarding super parameters while using this syntax, make sure that the SDK version in your pub spec is set to 2.17 or above. Anyways, next in the HUD class, I'll override the onload method. In this method, first let's create a new text component which will display the current score. I'll name this as score text component and will add it as a child. Now to see how it looks, let's go to the onload of simple platformer and add this HUD component after loading level 1. Then next, to actually see and make the HUD stay fixed in the viewport, we'll have to set the position type of HUD to position type dot viewport. I'll do this in the constructor of HUD. And now we can see the score text component. Right now it is sticking at the top left corner. So to add some margin, I'll set its position to 10,10. Now it looks much better. Next, for health, I'll create one more text component called health text component and add it as a child. To make this text component stay on the right side of the viewport, I'll first set its anchor property to anchor.topRight. Then I'll set its position to vector2 of gameref.size.x-10,10. This will place the top right corner of health text component at a margin of 10 from the top and right edge of the screen. Ok, and just to see it more clearly, I'll go to our material app in main.dart and will set debug show check mode banner to false. And while I'm at it, let's also change this title to simple platformer. Then next, to display a player icon next to the health text, I'll use a sprite component. Basically, this will just display the player sprite from our main sprite sheet. So I'll quickly copy the source position and source size of this component from the player component. Let's add this player sprite as a child here so that we can see it. Now to place this sprite right next to the health text, I'll first set its anchor to top right. And then I'll do some simple calculations for the position using position and size of health text component. Ok, this looks good enough, but there is a problem with this. If I go to level 2, you'll notice that the HUD fades a little bit. This happens because it is being rendered behind all the components of level 2. To fix this, we need to make the HUD component render on top of everything else. And to control the rendering order of components, we can use their priority property. So I'll go to the onload of game.dart and will set priority of HUD to 1. I'm setting this to 1 because by default all the other components are rendered with a priority as 0. So setting any number greater than that will ensure that the HUD is rendered only after all the other components are rendered. Now if I save this and try to go to level 2, you'll see that the HUD does not fade. Ok, now that we have a way to display score and health, let's create the class which will actually store these parameters. For that, I'll first create a new directory called model under lib. Inside this directory, I'll create a new file called playerdata.dart. And in this new file, I'll create a class called playerdata. This class will just hold two value notifiers of type int. One is for score and the other one is for health. Initial value for score will be 0 and for health it will be 5. I'm using value notifiers here because I want the HUD component to get notified when these values change. You'll see how we can do that in a while. 
But now let's go to the simple platformer class and add a final member of type player data here. I'm storing this here instead of the player class because on level change we remove the player component and spawn a new one in the new level. So if I store player data with player class it will be lost on every level change. Ok, now back in onload of hurt.dart, let's set up some listeners for score and health stored in player data. We can do this by using the add listener method on gameref.playerdata.score. This method needs a callback function which will be executed every time value of score changes. In this callback, I'll simply update the text property of score text component with the updated value of score. I'll quickly repeat the same thing for health property as well. And that is it. This should be enough to make the value update correctly on HUD. Now all that is left for us is to actually modify the player data when player collides with coin and enemies. Let's start with the coin class. First, I'll add the hasGameRef mixin of type simple platformer so that we can access the player data from parent game object. Then in the onCollisionStart method of this class, after ensuring that other is player and adding the fade out effect to current coin, I'll increment the value of gameRef.player.score by 1. Similarly, in the enemy class, again I'll add the hasGameRef mixin and in the onCollisionStart, I'll reduce the value of health by 1. And just to avoid negative values, let's add a check to ensure that health is greater than 0 before we try to reduce it. Ok, now let's save this and test the game. And as you can see, on collecting the coin, the score text is getting updated. Similarly, if I hit any enemy, you can see that the health is also updating correctly. And that was it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.